Hey guys, we're in the great outdoors today because it is the season. It is the time to get the heck out of the building. So we're gonna have a little chat here, have a little coffee, and you're welcome to join us. Hopefully the bugs don't keep flying through the shot, but I love that it did. It's nature, man. I know. Yeah. Fair disclosure, we are not AT through hikers or anything hardcore like that, right? No, it's, yeah. I'm, I go hiking uh, effectively every Sunday. Me and Liam go out, got my, my hiking stick here. I carve my name and Liam's name into it. Um, so I do go out regularly, but it's more like a two mile joint. Kind of a, kind of a day, day walk kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we, we do more camping than hiking because uh, my son ages ago realized that he was not into the outdoors much so we've we've always had kind of a challenge trying to get him to uh have any kind of endurance with this stuff right. so it's more like we'll go someplace and we'll camp um and and we'll do some loops and stuff and then we have the option of getting him back to camp quickly if we need to or uh you know leaving him behind which we wouldn't have done before but he's old enough now that we could actually leave Fair. him in camp yeah. you know and just um let him let him do his own thing i mean this it's kind of like you know how people love cruises because the idea is you, it's just like a giant floating hotel and you can go do your own thing and let the kids go off and do their own thing right the problem with that is it's a cruise ship <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and this is a lot more sanitary than a cruise ship so True, i'd, I'd this... much rather be out here than, yeah. than locked up in a in a floating hotel but... i i don't disagree mm -hmm. the bears I'm a little bit more concerned about letting kids run around by themselves. We don't have bears around here. Uh, not necessarily here, but in I mean, we have black bear, but we don't. Yeah. 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 But they're generally okay. Agreed. That's, that's, not, that's not that big a deal. No, now, it's, I, there, there's something to just, uh, you know, leaving it all behind, so to speak, and mm -hmm. just kind of unplugging, yeah. you know, our cell phones don't have reception out here. You know, right. we had to, right. it's just being able to just unplug, not worry about, you know, the, the, the drama, the, the BS, the, the emails, the Facebooks, the Twitters, the whatever. Yep. Um, yep. And just kind of chilling. Now, the, the, the vanity, of course, is that we do have technology with us. Otherwise, you guys wouldn't be seeing this. Um, but, you know, it's that's the sacrifice you make if you want to share an experience. Yeah. You know, it's like I'm so used to Zoom calls now after 2020 that the, I, I don't feel comfortable without it, having a camera in my face, at least. You know, it doesn't even have to be turned on. I just have to have that there. You know, it's just a, a security <laughs> blanket. Yeah, it makes me feel better somehow. Yes, I, I brush my teeth and record myself brushing my yeah, teeth. Yeah, well, so, you know, yeah. that's a whole channel out there. I'm sure there's I'm sure there's a TikTok for, you know, toothbrushing to certain songs, but <laughs> what's what's the uh, the CSBR or whatever the, the words are? AM, ASMR. ASMR. ASMR of toothbrushing. Yep. Yep. I I hope there is not an ASMR for toothbrushing. Uh, there uh, probably is. Oh, that'd be so creepy. <laughs> I actually like a lot of ASMR. It's uh, some of it's pretty cool, but uh, is there a video attached to it? Oh, never mind. Well, I'm getting too far well, down yeah, that the rabbit video hole. With it, yeah. yeah. No, but I but the, I think the whole reason that stuff exists, frankly, is because people cannot come out and do something like what we're doing now on a yep. regular basis. I mean, we are here under a tree canopy. There's a brook over there. I don't know if the mics will pick it up. There's birds. There's a wood frog behind us. Um, if you don't need ASMR. Or anything like yeah. that if you're able to have access to nature like this on even a semi-regular basis yeah this yeah. is asmr this is the, right. the babbling brook this is the whole work. idea yeah, yeah exactly the point yep i think your brain is wired to i don't know why but it's like your brain is definitely wired to uh find relaxation in thing, the, the sound of running water and fires and, I, and that's where asmr comes from i guess but i don't know why it works but there's something there's definitely something primal about it yeah and maybe it's like you know it's like um i could see the water being like you know, ah, there's water, therefore I have water I'm not going to dehydrate. <laughs> you know, I have a resource that I need. Or um, the fire noise would be like, okay, your brain from hunter-gatherer times retains some memory of, you know, this is security, this is Warmth, safety. This is food, yeah, 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 this is, you know, so this is, I am home, you know, I'm comfortable in camp or whatever. So there's, it's, it's definitely primal. And oddly enough, that reminds me of kilts. How's that for a segue? Great segue. Yes, absolutely. No, it's I, I agree. There's something uh, there. The kilt to me, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in my own terms. Um, the kilt to me is more than just 
a garment. It's more than just a connection to history, to family, to lineage. Um, at the same time, it's it's connection to nature. You know, if you're using well, wool fabric, more, more natural colors, it's mm -hmm. you feel mm -hmm. more more open. You know, because it's you know it's unbifurcated. So there's yep. there's that yep. aspect yep. to it. Yep. Um, yeah, it definitely. I don't know. It's there's something about it that's. It's not it's not lone wolf because um, I don't feel like I'm a lone wolf like you know guy against nature kind of thing or <laughs> you know guy by himself. Right. Um, there's 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 a tribe to it. Um, yeah. But it's it's definitely a, a a macho thing I can't necessarily put my finger on. So maybe we can tease it out a bit. Yeah, I mean, there's a uh, one of one of the best examples of kilts in nature I know is actually our recent ambassador Sarah Jo Fegley. So a female who's into kilts and being out in nature. So the gender may not be as big a deal, but the primal thing is definitely a, a, a big deal. Um, the reason you get into hiking and bushcrafting and stuff like that is, I think, because there's a sense of empowerment. There's, it's a combination of the relaxation, uh, the sense of freedom, and the, uh, the sense of empowerment that comes from doing the stuff yourself. And I think kilts because, and, and simplicity. And I think with the kilts, yeah. simplicity is probably the most key because it's, it, is, it is a very, you know, despite all the tailoring we, that goes into making a you know, professionally made one, it's a very simple, primal garment, okay? Um, you feel more connected to nature in it. The ventilation is great. I mean, there are practical benefits we can get into, but from a philosophical standpoint or an aesthetic standpoint, you just feel more connected because it's, it's freedom of movement and uh, just the simplicity of it is, is really appealing. Yeah, I, so. I remember the, uh, uh, the first time I wore it out in public um, the, I had the, uh, the un almost unnerving realization feeling that I had like a bath towel on. Like mm -hmm. I didn't wear underwear the first time I wore it out in public. Um, no, that was to the gym. The, the first time I went out and about for like the evening in it. Okay. I just, I kept getting this feeling like I was just like, I don't know, I don't know whether it was because of the no underwear thing at that point, um, in that instance, or whether it was what it was, but I just kind of felt a little off, but once I got over that mental curb, so to speak, um, it was fine. But I, yeah. I know what you mean. Because, I mean, um, when I went regimental for the first time, and that's that's all I did when I first got into kilting. Um, yeah, that you, you definitely you, having been raised in wearing all those layers and stuff, and being civilized like that. It, it uh, yeah, it is a little bit odd feeling, you know, and, yeah. and you're not used to the sensation, um, and and you're because you're new to this, you're you're hyper concerned about being exposed somehow. Like you're worried about that Marilyn Monroe moment happening, which almost never happens. I mean, occasionally you get something will happen, but um, yeah, you just and it's like yeah, you know. But you got but that's part of that mental curb we talk about that you got to get over. Yeah, you know, it's uh, there's uh, a, 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 a small sense of vulnerability, let's say. Yes, that, that comes in. Yes, you know, I, I wouldn't even say small. Mm -hmm. There's it depending on uh, what when you're wearing it, how you're wearing it, who you're wearing it around. It could be a huge sense of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. The uh, the question we asked on on the end of one of our shows, I'm actually curious about your thoughts on it and your your moments. Moi. Yes. Okay. The um, we've had, we've talked before about you know the first time we wore our kilt out in public, mm -hmm. and you know what was the you know where was it that you wore it the first time and that kind of stuff. But the thing that I'm actually uh, minor I won't say obsessed about, but I'm very very curious about on an individual psychological level. What is the, the spark, that, that moment, not the experience, but that moment where you said like, okay, it's done, I'm doing it, period, now. Um, and you get over the curb. What was it that, that last little bit that pushed you over? Um, hmm. Was it, you know, for me, it was, um, like I've said before, you know, you know, writing in a journal, you know, am I a man of my word? Do I care what other people think of me? And just going at it. And then I made the financial commitment to it um, where I bought actually two kilts at the same time. But right. after I got that, because that way I'm, I'm financially involved. I have to at some point. But what was the moment where I said like, okay, done, I'm doing it today. For me, it was like, I just needed that little extra. And I, was, I knew I was gonna wear it, couldn't figure out where. And it was when my buddy Scott said, if you wear it to the gym, we'll give you 50 bucks. And I was like, okay, done. And I just like, oh, 
that's it. I have to do it now. Um, but even going back to the, the, the investing in it and the buying the two of them together at the same time, it was I made some kind of psychological you know, light switch there as well with the this is going to happen. And mm -hmm. then it was just a matter of you know, predetermination pre or whatever. It's, it was just going to predestiny. predestiny. Thank you. It was going to occur, period. I was Rick going Calvin to make it happen. Exactly. It was just a matter of <laughs> figuring out the who, what's, where's, and why's. Right. Um, I, I think my process is probably similar. Uh, the, my, my, uh, my moment of actually, I'm going to do this. I actually, I, 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 I stepped into the little end of the pool to make it easier on myself. You know, just, you know, instead of like diving into the deep end cannonballing, um, like going to the gym, of course I had a financial incentive there, but, uh, I, I, the, I, I found a safe spot to do it, which was a, with my family because I have my, my, my wife and my then infant, uh, daughter with us. And we went to uh, an, a Mennonite grocery store, which I knew like, okay, this is a very simple trip out. This is a very simple uh, in the country kind of a place. It's not like a huge crowd or anything. So I just, you know, I was very gentle with myself. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have a slight advantage in that um, since I was in the SCA, I always had a de facto safe space where I could kilt up and nobody would give a damn. Yeah, you know, because everybody's running around in medieval clothing yeah. of all kinds of different types, you know, so I could easily wear a kilt if I wanted to at an event and it would be no big deal. So for me, the, the hurdle was going out into the mundane world, um, out among, you know, the, the, muggle, the muggles or the normals or however you want to put it. Um, that was probably the, the, the mental barrier, you know, and I had a few of the moments of like the kids driving past in the car, you know, you know, doing the stupid, you know, goofy shit. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I had the same experience as everybody else that, you know, once I got past that first um, nervousness and that sense of vulnerability, not just from being regimental, but just the vulnerability of being in a non-conformist garment, um, it was okay. I just kind of ramped up after that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what other people, how our, you know, our customers, our friends, um, viewers, how everybody comes to wearing it. Um, a lot of times it's, uh, it's, I'll go out on a little bit of a limb because I'm not them, um, but a lot of times it's Ancestry.com or something yep. like that, yep. where they finally discover that they're Scottish and like, oh, then they want to jump in with both feet. Um, yep. And that's the, that is the moment. Um, for others, it's the wedding uh, where, yep. you know, they, yep. they get it and, you know, if that's what they've packed for the day, they can't back out unless they back out the entire thing or, mm -hmm. or go up mm -hmm. naked, either one. Um, <laughs> That's the, a different kind of wedding. Yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else, any other impetus, any other well, let me, origin. Let me, let, me, uh, let me comment on what you just said though, because I think those, those reasons are, um, the ancestry thing, the heritage thing is, is internal, but it implies that you've got some kind of uh, a family connection that maybe means you have a support network. You will at least have a few people who are like, hey, you're representing our people. Awesome. Good going. The wedding is a public thing. Again, it's a very much a community thing. Um, so for some people, it's a very it's an external motivator. As well, but there's always an internal motivator of some kind. Yeah, I think I think for a lot of our customers, it's definitely more the heritage thing. That's a vast difference from, I think, the people who get into kilts like I did originally, because I came to the heritage thing a lot later, um, I got into it because, you know, I wanted to find a, an expression of personal freedom. It was, you know, I've always been a nonconformist. So it was partly, you know, this is a way of expressing my nonconformity. Um, it was the, I loved the aesthetic. Uh, and I wanted something that made me feel more natural and primal and primitive and just, you know, out there and, you know, like warrior spirit, you know, and that's, that's if you're in the woods, there's nobody around to be worried about, you know, how you look wearing a, a kilt. You, you, it's absolutely out here. It's absolutely about your personal reasons, you know, whether they're practical or I'll say it spiritual, you know, for, for some, for to some degree for me, it was a bit of a spiritual expression. You know, I was trying to start off on this, this journey for myself, for my own enrichment. You know what I mean? So that's your biggest fan right there. Um, so yeah, I'm rambling a little bit. Do you get where I'm coming from? It's I do, like, I do. I'm trying to think where. It wasn't about other people for me at that point. It became about heritage and things and history later for yeah. me, for me at least. And it's, it's also, 
Um, I, I came similar as I wasn't into the into the heritage. I was, but I wasn't. I was, it was ancillary to who I was. I was more into music and that kind of stuff in my mid twenties. Mm -hmm. um, I knew my family history. I had my you know crest tattoos, um, but it was it was more of a, a personal thing, and a uh, yeah, it, it was more of a challenge. It yeah. was it was more of a, a, a call to action within myself than it was an external motivator. I mean, yeah. I went to Celtic festivals, but I didn't feel the need to get a kilt to fit in. I, you know, it's, right. I didn't need one for family heritage. It was more of a, I just want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and then just mm -hmm. cementing that in yourself, kind mm -hmm. of, you know, how do you yep. get over that curb is you just yep. make a decision and stick to it. Like doing a diet, it's you just got to make a decision <laughs> and go. I would say it's, getting into kilts has been a lot easier for me than ever dieting over was. <laughs> Fair point. COVID has proven that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have some more snacks in here if you're hungry. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, but, but no, I, I, I get what you're saying. It's, uh, there's always that internal motivator. I think that's, that's probably a common denominator is that there's always going to be a personal challenge aspect to this. There's always going to be a, you know, some, something where you, you need to, you need to do it for your own sake. You need to do it to let yourself go you need to, to free yourself from something you know and and it could be e it's easier for some people some people are you know they're raised in a pipe band yeah you know and yeah, they're yeah, raised yeah. with yeah. it as a normal thing but again that's there, there's a there's a community connection and then there's a personal connection i think the personal connection has to be there if you're only doing it for a community connection at some point you're going to lose if the community changes or whatever then you, yeah or you if you just or you out. get burnt out like yeah. the kid who's raised in the bagpipe band you know i think you know sometimes you're just like well, that was the thing my dad did, and I really don't care about it anymore. Yeah. You know, so, but if you have that personal motivation, yes, yeah. it keeps you going. You know, you're, you're, you're feeding yourself. Yeah, and that, I would say that, that kind of, it's an overarching thing for anything. If it's something that you want to do, you choose to do, it's your own, I won't say cross the bear, but it's your own <laughs> thing. It's, it's like, it's, you have to do it. You feel it's an imperative to, to live who you are, to be what you are, to do what you want to do for your own sake and nobody else's, yeah. that's, that's what's more interesting to me. You gotta, I, think, I think imperative is a good word. Um, you gotta self-actualize. I think it's about self-actualizing. It's within, okay. within you know, therapy terms. <laughs> okay. How have, how have you chosen to self-actualize and fulfill your inner self, yes. Rocky? Yes, sit on the rocks, Mr. Buddha. Yeah, tell me about your mother. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's, it, it really comes down to that at some point. Because at some point you're, you, you gotta decide is it really for you all the way or is it, are you doing it as a performance piece? If you're doing it as a performance piece, so kind of what I'm saying about the community thing is yeah. less strong than the, the in, internal reasons for getting into it. If, well, it, if it's just a performance, then <clears throat> that becomes a performance. It's a ritual. It's a, it's, you know, a it, uniform. Yes, but I, I'll, I'll take performance piece a different way. Um, that may just be who you are. You mm. may be outgoing and you're trying to find the most outgoing outfit you can be to express yourself. You want to, you know, you want to wear a loud McLeod kilt suit, to, you know, top to bottom, um, just as a way to kind of, you know, just be out there and be the attention whore <laughs> that you've always wanted to right, be. Right. Um, you know, but it's, that has something to do with it as well. There's, there are people who just love the attention that it will bring them. Mm. Yeah, at some point, at some point, it comes down to there, there's as many different reasons as there are people. It's a, I think it's a, it's a mix. Everybody's got their own mix. Oh yeah, yeah. It's all about. legs of the stool. It's all you know. Um, I'm thinking of like an equalizer where some you know dial this up a little bit, dial this down a little bit. It's all a recipe um, in order to get into it. But eventually, mm -hmm. we all get into it. That's why you're watching this video. The um, we hope. Yeah. If not. They just think we're. No, we hold these cameras into the woods for nothing. Exactly. Uh. We, we hold them like we do all the work. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm just the talent. I just go and sit where they tell me and talk. Exactly. Yes. You know. One thing we did forget to. Uh, bring up that's a necessity huh. for going hiking in the woods. Huh. Scotch. Oh, you mean, oh, here we go. I brought a little bit. No, that's not, that's my coffee. No, I, 
Yeah, we're... <laughs> we can travel, have scotch, we'll travel. Okay, okay. And the, uh, of course, we have to have the official off sold after highly coveted Glen Cairn glasses. Yeah, you know we're not through hiking because <laughs> no, this is not a weekend. <laughs> yeah, Glen Cairn glasses and yeah, okay. Cheers. Oh. All right, all right. Yeah. Cool, cool. It's it's late enough in the day. It's five o'clock at some altitude. Exactly. There you go. I'll let you put yeah. your own. I also have the the official USA Kilts water bottle. <laughs> With, with not enough hands to hold all this stuff. I only need a skosh. Where's your, where's the, Here. you got the cap. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna make a, make a really, really Would you like weird a? Irish coffee. I will give it to you first. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Indeed. Random, had to do this. I know, I'm, no I'm, I'm highly amused, I'm highly amused. You have to carry your scotch glasses into the woods with always, you. Always hike with a buddy so that you have somebody to carry you out when you get soused on the trail. Indeed. And uh, you know, uh, make sure you're prepared to make splints because when you turn your leg, I'm, I'm fine to make it back to the car. Ah, that's not that much. I'm just teasing. It's the weed room. Yep, cheers. Slanja. Slanja. Is the Shield Egg 12? Shield Egg 12, yep. Okay. Yeah, still love it. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Now you don't you don't bring you don't bring scotch when you're hiking with your son. <laughs> right. Here, hold daddy's walking stick. I gotta do something. <laughs> no, I don't bring <laughs> scotch when I hike with my son. The um, uh, we just do you know quick little day jaunts. But the mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was who was I talking to him about the other day? Um, I was like, oh yeah, we're gonna drive two cars. We're going to the car wash. And I was like, okay, well you take the, which car do you wanna take? You drive one down, cause we gotta do both cars. And he was like, okay, wait, I'm not allowed to drive yet, am I? I'm like, dude, you're seven, no. Yep. Damn, Damn, so close. When can I drive? Well, Maybe you, tomorrow. You got, you got a bit. But probably not. Yeah. yeah. No, I, 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 I do, I think there's something fine about having a nip with you mm -hmm. on the trail. I mean, we will always bring something with us when we go for a weekend. Um, but that's a back at camp thing. Yeah, I won't actually. <laughs> I won't actually bring it out. I mean, we're having like a, a leisurely woodland breakfast here, basically. Um, but uh, brunch. Brunch. Yeah, brunch it's probably, makes us it's, sound less yeah, alcoholic. It's brunch now. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. You know, that, you know, you have mimosas. Yes. It's like yes. the one. The one thing you're allowed to have alcohol for breakfast is bloody marys. Mimosa. Oh, bloody marys. Okay. Screwdrivers, maybe, because there's OJ. Right. 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 I hate bloody marys. See, it's not in tomato juice. See, tomato I love juice. tomato juice and I don't mind vodka. It's the it's all the Tabasco and all the other stuff they put in a Bloody Mary. Like mm -hmm. if I'm, I'm going I just want vodka and, and tomato juice or vodka and V8 maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But yeah, a little bit a little bit of a nip by the fire. And I did not bring my pipe today because we weren't sure about smoking on camera to be honest. Yeah. You know, but the uh um, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of, I, I like, I like doing a day hike and then getting back to camp and then having the fire and the scotch and pipe. That's bliss. That yeah. is just, you know, I think, I think relieving tension is a huge part of this. That, that is, that is the, that is at yes. the core of all this stuff, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's not just the adventure. It's not just going out and slaying the dragon in your psyche. It's also coming back to the comfortable inn you know, with your compatriots and hanging around in the fire, you know, yeah. ha ha. No, I agree. And Scott, for me, Scotch is one of those where after uh, it's, it has a magical quality of just like, even just smelling Scotch, blood pressure goes down. Yeah. And like a sip, it just kind of like, uh, it, it, it melts away, you know, stress to a degree, which is, you know, part of why it's dangerous. Yeah, um, yeah. In the, for the wrong people, but it's, it's still a good, it's it's the way to just like exhale mentally. I don't yeah, know and how I think to say I think that. no, it's like and you talk about hill walking in back in the day in Scotland, you know, hill walking, which is basically hiking, um, or you know, Victorian era going out into the country, you would basically always have a flask, and it was it was for the practical benefit of the illusion of warming up because alcohol doesn't actually warm you up, but it gives you the illusion of feeling warm. Um, so it's a comfort thing there. 
it's a practicality thing of uh, a, a mild muscle relaxant. You know, if, you, if you've got tension from, you know, we're talking pre-painkillers, pre-ibuprofen, so, you know, scotch <laughs> scotch or, or something similar would be... Uh, Bad knees and arthritis. So. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a way of, of mitigating those issues. Um, it's It really is medicinal in some ways. And I think that's, you know, we call it the water of life. And they called it the water of life originally because it was originally medicinal. You know, it was something you got from the priest or from the monks or whatever because it was, it was something that theoretically would help you in a healthy way. You know, and, and I think it's because of the release of tension. It's because of the muscle relaxant on a physical level, but on an emotional level, yeah, it just makes you feel less stress. So there's probably some placebo in there too, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very traditional. It makes know? you feel at least better when you are stressed. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that, there's that. But um, yeah, there's a reason why the Royal Navy gave uh, rum rations, you know, and why you could mutiny if you didn't get your rum ration. So the one thing we didn't talk about in all this is fun. Is it fun to wear a kilt? Is it fun to go out hiking? Is it fun to wear a kilt while hiking? No. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah, never it is, recommend it. It's a hair shirt. It's torture. It's all about, it's all about proving yourself before the fates and the gods and the wilderness that would destroy you. No, of course it's fun. It's, it's, that's the, it, it is, it is, I think the, the, um, like I've said before, and like I may have said earlier, I think that simplicity is key for letting go of stress. Kilts are about simplicity and connection, and there's fun in that too. It's the, for me, the being outside is about uh, serendipity. That uh, you don't know what you're going to discover around the next corner, uh, which is a great metaphor for life, um, <laughs> you know? Um, my wife is, my wife loves fungus. Yeah. That's I know. an odd segment. I know, it's an odd segment. It's an odd, <laughs> it's an odd sentence, but basically, um, getting out into nature is about the joy of discovery, which reminds me of my ancestors. You know, we, we were, we were not just raiders. We were also explorers and, uh, we, the joy of discovery is a big part of this. Um, and for my wife, it's all about fungus, you know, or fungi. We'll, we'll walk on a trail and she'll find like some orange, like you know, in there, funky, yeah. funky looking mushroom and we'll have to stop and take pictures of it. Um, and I think that's a great thing for your kids is basically um, they will they will experience the joy of being outdoors unabashedly. You know, they're not going to be worried about getting home before it gets dark. You know, they're not going to be worried about, you know, sun sunburn and stuff like that. They're just in it. They're in the moment, you know, and, and, and I think that uh, this lifestyle of which kilts are a part is basically about being present. You know what I mean? It's about being in the here and now and, and the joy of being in the here and now. Correct. I would, I would add to that the, the disconnection from electronic devices, the, the disconnection from society, the disconnection yeah. from all the rest of it, from this, whether it's you know, kids you know, wanting to play video games, that kind of stuff, all the way to, up to the adults having to check email and things like that. Yep. Um, for me, it's more the... Uh, uh, less about the discovery to some degree. It's discovery of myself. It's less yeah. about discovery of things around me. It's more discovery about myself. Mm -hmm. It's more doing what I want to do when I want to do it. And ultimately that's like why a lot of people come to kilts and why they enjoy kilts and why they enjoy hiking is there are no rules. Well, there are rules you're not supposed to, you know, light fires and da 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 da. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's you take the path you want, literally right. and figuratively. Right. right. It's you do what you want to do when you want to do it. Um, you're out here by yourself in, in life. And, you know, all this is a big metaphor. Yep. Um, yep. So that's, that's really what it boils down to. We got metaphors coming out of our ears. We've exactly. got some metaphors here. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's, it's but that's the, uh, I think, I think uh, getting into kilting, it, it appeals to people who are more outgoing. And it helps people who are not outgoing to become more outgoing. Yes, yes, 100% yes. Yeah. It's, 
a lot, that's one thing we didn't touch on earlier, I wish it kind of would have, is it helps people come out of their shell. If they can just get that little bit of courage up to try it the first time. Yeah. We've had, uh, you know, customers say like, my 13 year old kid was, you know, shy. They didn't really talk to anybody. They didn't have many friends at school, but then he started wearing a kilt and he just came out of his shell. He was just a whole new person right. because he got a confidence in it that does not exist in most kids of that age, it's they're all you know wanting to hide and blend in, but mm -hmm. to be able to step out and be like, this is who I am, this is what I'm doing, period, like like it or lump it. Yeah. It's there's a uh, there's a freedom in that mm -hmm. that is uh, yeah, I think, unparalleled. I think, yeah, and I think uh, getting into kilts can be an, an exercise in building confidence, and then when you have that confidence built up, you tend to transfer it to other areas of your life. You know, like uh, there are people who will get into hobbies or travel or things that they might not have considered before you know they did that other that previous step of their journey and kilts are a very good a very good step of the journey they're a good milestone and a good starting point so. yeah it's a it's a visceral physical thing that you can do that elicits an emotional response it elicits brain chemistry to shift mm -hmm. it elicits all these things to help you just come out of your shell and be more confident in your own decisions in life in general and i'm i'm overstating it but i don't care because that's how i actually feel about it it's the scotch is, talking <laughs> <laughs> it's it's one of those things where it's it allows you to just be you yeah period and once yeah. you get in there that's it yeah so and i'll even say you know get outside even even if you don't do it in a kilt freaking get outside man it's, yeah. it's it's really healthy it's you need it you may not realize how much you need it but you need it just, i agree just get out there kilts make it better but, but whatever you do, get out there. Speaking of needing it, want to take a hike? Yes, I think that's a good idea. Very good. Let's do that. Till next time, boys and girls. Slanjava. Slanjava.